So in this section we're going to be talking about the closing techniques. So with closing techniques we have five different types of closing techniques and we're going to start off by talking about the trial close. And we're going to do talk about how you can do it and why you would do it. So when we talk about the trial close to begin with, uh, what a trial close is or how, so that's what a trial close is, it's any question, a question that ends in a yes or a yeah. And in a yeah. So any question that ends in a yeah. And the reason we do it is two reasons. One, to gauge their impulse. So just like we talked about in the kiss versus kill section, if you're doing trial closes throughout your presentations with yes at the end, you can find how impulse they are. And the second reason is to get them in yes mode. Now the reason we want to be getting them in yes mode is that compliance obviously plays a huge role in human behaviour. Uh, there's actually a TV show with Darren Brown, uh, he's an English illusionist or like, psychologist, whatever. Uh, he's a performer and what he did, he did a whole show talking about how if he got people doing these tiny little things and complying to tiny little stuff like moving a suitcase when they shouldn't have to or helping change um, these tags on sausage rolls into vegetarian sausage roll because they didn't order the vegetarian, would he start doing these tiny things and build up to actually pushing someone off the edge? Uh, I, I don't want to ruin the show but if you go watch it, it's called Darren Brown The Push and it teaches you all about compliance and it's so crucial. If you can get them in more yes mode, the more yeses, the easier they are to say yes at the end. So it's any type of question ending in a yeah is a trial close. The second uh, closing technique is an assumptive close. So with the assumptive close, how you do it is lift the iPad. So you just lift the iPad and assume that they're going to get on board. That doesn't mean you're just lifting the iPad just randomly. Obviously, you normally like to follow a trial close with a lift of an iPad, but obviously you just assume that they're getting on board. If you hesitate, so no hesitation. Because if you hesitate, what it does is it undermines all the confidence that you've just shown and it makes them hesitate then once again. You transfer that emotion. So if you're 100% confident, no hesitation, you can assume them. The reason we do this is because we want to show confidence in our product. So you want to show confidence in the product, and also people are very ummy and ari. So very um and ahs. Spelling's terrible. Very um and ahs. Uh, so with um and ahs, obviously what it is, is a lot of people are always 50-50. They're very indecisive. So if you make a decision for them, most of the time they'll just go with it. If, once again, ethically, that is something they should be getting on board with, can get on board with, and would want to get on board with, they'll obviously continue through. So if you're assumptive, kind of makes that decision for them so they don't have to sit on that fence. Uh, once again, if you always said, oh, do you want to have hamburgers or spaghetti for dinner? People would be like, ooh, and they would um and ah for ages. Sometimes you just go, cool, man, we're just having hamburgers today. You'd be like, you're all right, cool. And you just go with it. So once again, that's the same. Gets people out from being so indecisive. Another close is an alternative close. So the alternative close, how you do it, it's any way that you do say, for example, Mr. or Doctor. Uh, you might say different amounts that they can date. So $2 a day, $1.50 a day, $1.30 a day. Uh, you could maybe ask payments, is it credit card or direct debit? So alternative is basically when you give them any type of alternatives they can choose from. The reason we do this, it gives them the, what we call the illusion of control. So when you're giving people the illusion of control, obviously what they'll do is they'll think that they're the ones making the decision, uh, even though you're giving them a win-win scenario. So it is a win-win scenario for us, you're giving them two options. And you'll see this happen all over. It's obviously with any type of sales, there'll always be this or this, or a good salesperson. But do you want this one or this one? And then if you go, you know what, I'm gonna go for that one that's a bit cheaper. You know what I mean? It makes them feel like they're in control, they've made that decision. But really it's a win-win scenario for them there, getting their commission if they're at a store and I think if it's based on commission they're getting that anyway or the store's making money regardless. So that's an alternative close. Then we've got an indifferent close. So with an indifferent close what you do is it's anything where you might say have involving shrugging, or you might give them a choice. So for example you might give them a choice between these amounts that you can choose so it's indifferent you're not assuming them onto it. Um, you might even say words like opportunity and chance as well, best for you, 
were the phrase best for you, which is best for you, what works best for you is the easiest way. Obviously it gives them that, it's in that in different clothes where you know they're gonna get on board. So it shows confidence. Once again, confidence in the product. It also removes pressure. If it feels that maybe you've been a little bit boisterous and a bit enthusiastic to get them motivated to get one to get on board, but you just wanna make sure that you're not pushing the envelope too much and maybe making it seem like you're being too forceful, a nice and different clothes, something like, which of those is best for you? Obviously it allows them to make that choice once again. If it's mixed in with an alternative as well, it gives them a little win-win, gives them the illusion of control, removes all that pressure off of yourself. And last but not least, is a silent close. So with the silent close, uh, it's basically any type of phrase where you're just shutting the fuck up. So once you've done your close, you go silent. Even if, for example, in your presentation, there was one or two bits that you wanted to mention, maybe the tax back, maybe if you wanted to talk about, if you're selling a car, if you want to talk about the extra features or deals that they can be done there. If you've gone to go into the close and you've done the sound fair enough or which is best for you or Mr. or Doctor, anything like that, if you've done your close, you're shutting the fuck up. Because it's the first person that speaks. Speaks, loses. So the first person that speaks will lose. Because obviously it undermines any of that confidence. If you stay silent, just nodding, a lot of the time, once again, it's showing confidence. Once again, showing confidence in your product. But it's allowing them, it's the, what we call the rational man close. Would sound fair enough, that's the rational man close. What it allows people to do is let them think, let the cogs turn, and that decision to be made from there. So obviously that's why silent closes always shut the fuck up. First person to speak loses because it undermines and it shows who's got the authority and where they can move from there. And that's the five closing techniques, guys. So with these closing techniques, there are a combination of them when it looks at our division that we're looking at, but let's look at this in the whole wide range of sales. You can mix and match these all the time. So you could do an assumptive alternative. So you can say, there's two payment types, direct debit or card, are you a card user? If they say, yeah, you go, awesome, what's the name on the card? You've assumed them that they're gonna go onto card rather than saying, which is best for you? Uh, where vice versa, you could say, which of these, you got this amount, this amount, this amount, which amount is best for you? You could do assumptive alternative where you could say, this is the amount, this is the amount, but most people are popping out on that, starts on this date, and which is the best payment for you? You could do a silent close with sound fair enough, mixed in with a trial close of, obviously you might be going, uh, that sounds fair, yeah? and you can end it with a trial close with a yeah, which is a silent and indifferent close as well. They say yeah, you continue, you then assume. It's, you've got loads of mix and matches of these, but it's all about combining them. And the key to this is to follow through with certainty. Uh, obviously make sure you're nice and loud, and when you're going for that close, fucking go for it. Do what we call ABC, always be closing. If you're seeing that they're impulse, get that eye for the worst case scenario, they say no, or they have an objection that you can then deal with through the objection handle models. It's all about closing with confidence, absolute certainty, nice and loud, nice and calm, and then get up with that iPad and show that you're assumptive, show that you're confident in that product.